What's up, all my smiling, happy people? I know, I know there's been small riots on the internet because I have not been around for about four months. Not a lot I could do about that. I've, I've been busy, I've been sick twice. I got the uh, Omicron and the Delta, maybe both, maybe Fluorona, whatever stupid names they're calling diseases these days. I got sick twice and a lot of big things have happening. I know what you're thinking. You're like, well, everything looks the same. There's nothing changing on your set at all. Oh, I fooled you with the cheesy transition even, and you didn't see it coming. I'm in a new studio space. I love it. I'm also in a new city. Can you guess where? I don't know, let's check it out. Let's see if you can tell where I am. So there you go, the cat is out of the bag. As uh, many of you eagle-eyed viewers may have noticed, or just any that can see a giant sign up on a hillside, I've moved to Hollywood, California, the mecca for anybody in this industry, and I've been getting a lot of work, and that's why I haven't been on here, but I'm going to make a concerted effort to try to post here consistently while still working down here in Hollywood, uh, a lot of people have been asking me what kind of work I'm doing. I'm doing whatever they will pay me to do. I've done sound work. I've done grip and gaff work. I've assistant directed. I have cinematographered. I've done a lot of VFX stuff. Like I said, just anything that'll get my foot in the door and uh, get me new connections. And uh, it's been a very busy few months and I couldn't ask for anything better. But enough about that. Let's uh, get to why this video is here. It is a another light, a light that comes in this case, a light called the Suit Photo. I think I'm calling that correct. The Suit Photo P80 RGB. And it's a chip on board light that's very compact and still packs a punch. Today I'm going to be comparing it to uh, something I thought would be a little out of its league, the Aperture 120T. I know you're probably asking yourself, well, why not compare it to the 120D? Well, I'm using the 120D over there, and I didn't want to compare it to my 300D because, well, you can't compare something this size to a 300D. So right off the bat, it comes with the light itself. It comes with a hood, which looks very, very similar to the new Aperture hoods. I'm not sure if this comes with it or not, but it's something I found to be very handy. And if it doesn't come with it, I'm sure there's a link for it in the description down below, like there will be for all this stuff. It's a NPF to V mount. And I know what you're thinking. That doesn't look like it would hook up to a V mount. Uh, let me show you why. Let me grab a V mount. So I've grabbed a V mount battery. And if you look on the back and you try to plug them in, you see that they're both male V mounts. So why? Would they put a male V-mount on this? Well, that would be so you can clamp it to a light stand. You just take the little V-mount, slide it right in, and it clicks right in, and now you have something that you can put on a light stand. And then everything else that's in here is just cords, so I don't need to show you all that. The case itself is not great. It's got little feet on the bottom, so it won't damage if you slam it on the ground very much but it's not going to protect too much else. So just, you know, keep that in mind. Um, don't stack it underneath heavy things. I've already torn this part on the top here while trying to grab it out of a stack of gear. And uh, yeah, I, I've really put this thing through its paces this time because uh, I used it a lot on some feature sets. All right, so for setting up purposes, I am going to take this little guy off here. To do that, you just push this little guy here and pull it out real easy, real basic. But I am gonna use this to power it, so that way it's portable. One of the advantages of having battery powered is you don't have to have cables running all over the place. 
So on the side, you can see that the way it tightens is it has these little mounts with the teeth and then you just tighten it up and it holds in. And I am going to point it straight this way. So that way you guys can see the screen. So this battery power adapter thing is not really revolutionary. It's just a D-tap to uh, whatever proprietary plug this is. You plug the D-tap in right there. And then on the bottom, you just plug it into the light and just like that this is all you need except for two more batteries obviously you can light everything with just this setup here no ballast no other cords it's very portable and uh very useful okay so to hook these up you just plug the d-tap in and then slide in your npf batteries and something that i like to do before i do anything is Hit that little check button because you see how it's blinking there. This thing's very, very testy. And so, yeah, now it's working a little. So, like I said, these things are very testy. And one thing you have to do is make sure that your batteries are fully charged or it just won't take them. Mine are not charged. So, yeah, I think I'm going to pivot from using this guy here to using just a v-mount because with the cord they provide you you can just hook the d-tap up to a v-mount battery and you're ready to go it'll make it easier for right now so first thing you do is you push and hold this sometimes you have to hold it for a minute before it pops on and there we go and woo we got a lot of light so i'm going to dim that down with this right-handed controller here all right so we have it on zero just so we can see things and we don't have too much of an issue with it so as you can see it goes from 2800 kelvin all the way up to 10,000 Kelvin. Why you would ever need to go to 10,000 Kelvin, you may ask. Well, you probably won't, but it makes it to where 5,600 Kelvin, which is daylight, is brighter because it has more headroom and it can light up the daylight a little brighter when it goes to 5,600. Now for me, I would have rather had it been about 8,000 to 2,000 Kelvin, so that way you had more headroom on the tungsten sign as well, but you know, beggars can't be choosers. So yeah, we have it right here on tungsten. First things first, I'll show you uh, the results I got on the output tests. So the first thing you may notice is I'm a little out of focus because I forgot to check my focus when I was doing these tests. And what can I say? I may live in Hollywood, but I'm still getting back in the swing of this YouTube thing. Don't, don't hold it against me, please. Okay, I'm getting slaughtered in the comments. I know, I know, I know. Anyways, let's get back to it. When on tungsten, the suit photo came in at 834 lux which is very bright considering the Aperture 120T, which all it does is pump out tungsten, came in just above it at 904. So this little guy right here almost matched the output of the Aperture 120T. Now that can be a little deceiving because you may be able to see it in this clip, you may not be able to, but the Aperture basically lit up the whole wall where the suit photo kind of had a spot. So it was much more directional so there was more output from the aperture, but in, in a single spot, this was almost there. And when it comes to daylight, it came in at 1056 lux, which is more than the 120T. And I was not expecting that. It didn't matter how zoomed in or spotted it was. That really surprised me. Here's what it looks like with red, green, and blue. And as you know, my Lux meter doesn't read anything except for white light, so I can't measure how bright the red, green, and blue channels are. But in this test, it's just kind of a bonus. Both of these lights have high CRI, so we don't need to compare them too much on that because they're both above 95, and that's all I really need from a light. Uh, let's jump back into the menu set here. So if you hit this button here, you can go through what's called an HSI. The I stands for intensity. The S stands for saturation, and the H stands for hue. If you turn the right one, you turn basically the intensity of the LED. If you turn the left one, it's the color. It's just like any HSI color wheel. It goes from zero to 360, and it basically turns on that. If you push this button here, you can get the saturation to be higher or lower. And one thing I like is that it pivots around, so you don't have to if you want something at like 350, you don't have to scroll from zero all the way to 350. You can go from, let's say you're on five, you wanna to go to 360, you can go back and start at 360 there and you don't have to go all the way the other direction. 
So when you hit the button again, you can individually control every chip on the light, the red channel, green channel, blue channel, and both white channels, which is really cool. It has a bunch of different effects. If you want to see what they are, I'll scroll through them real quick here. We have fire, fireworks, faulty bulb, TV, RGB circles, paparazzi, lightning, police, like always, fire truck, ambulance, you know, the normal ones. And you can control the frequency and the brightness of all those effects too. All right, so now the internals are done. Let's turn this light off. And let's look at this hood right here. This is the kind of hood that Aperture started doing where it's really directionalized and made the light brighter. And uh, I think it was a good idea. It's not, not quite as sturdy as the Aperture one, but it's still much sturdier than like the GVM, which dented right when I got it. And you can see on the back end here, it is a Bowens mount, which means this light also has a Bowens mount. And if you don't know what a Bowens mount is, it's the mount that goes on the front here and you just push it in and turn it and it clicks in. And then it has a spring-loaded button right here. You can push it and pop it right out. And I love those sorts of things. So I've been talking about the size of this light. Let me put the aperture right next to it so you can see the difference in size. It's just so much smaller than the aperture. It's like a mini little brother to the aperture. The aperture has a bigger heat sink, so the cooling is going to be a little better. There's a little fan in both of these. But as you can see, the aperture is a high-quality fan while... The suit photo is just a little computer fan, but you really don't hear either one when it overheats. It's really not that big of a deal. Next thing you'll notice is build quality. They're both metal, but you can tell that the aperture is just a little bit better built. And that's kind of one of the things you're paying for when you're paying for an aperture light is the fact that these things are tanks and you're not going to break them. I have had a couple little issues with the suit photo. Um, with the battery power, sometimes I was getting this flickering thing. Like uh, if the batteries aren't like 75% full, it'll start flashing at higher outputs. Um, so that's something to keep in mind. Uh, yeah, basically I was using this in a car scene where we had to we had to put it in a spot that was very small and match the sun's output because it was sunny out. And we had to shoot through a window and for whatever reason, the cinematographer at the time didn't have a polarizer filter and we're shooting through a window. So all you could see was the reflection of the sun bouncing out the window. So we had to make the inside bright enough and you can't just put one of these lights in there this I was able to sneak in and use this as a mini stand, kind of like this. And I was able to aim it straight at the actor and it worked out great. And so apparently there's a big crime happening around here because all I hear is helicopters and police sirens. Um, I guess that's something I'm gonna have to get used to with my studio being in the middle of Hollywood. Uh, yeah, welcome to Los Angeles, me. So you can tell they made these for real photographers because it doesn't have one of those little screw-on mounts for the uh, stupid light stands. It actually has a seat stand mount, which is good. Overall, though, it's built really nice. It's obviously not the same quality as the Aperture, but for the price, and that's something I haven't gotten into yet, is the price difference on these. It's amazing. Now, when I said I put this thing through its paces, you can see I really did. I used it on three different feature sets uh, just in the last two months. Um, another thing I have to say thank you for is these guys have been so patient for me waiting to make this video. They basically gave this light to me right before I left Portland for Hollywood. And yeah, that was like three months ago. And so they've been very patient with me. And uh, I just want to give them a, a shout out here um, because a lot of other companies wouldn't have been that patient and that really meant a lot to me that they believed in me enough in my in the content of this channel to uh stand by and be the first uh, video that hits from uh hollywood the fact that this thing does rgb on top of all this stuff um is kind of mind-blowing because for a long time the only rgb chip on board light i could find was like gbms which i've shown in the past i think the first video i ever made was on a gbm chip on board rgb light um but the fact that it's all built into this little form factor is is really cool. I also like that it has this little plastic protector above the chip so you don't scratch the chip all up. I would like something like Aperture does, like with this big plastic thing being on top of it a little bit better, but you can't win them all. You're just going to have to be a little bit more careful when you're packing this light up because of the case limitations. So overall, I was very impressed with this little guy. I... I really like 
the form factor, the fact that it can do every kind of light I need. It has a high output. I would really like to put this up against some of the new smaller aperture lights um, to see which one's brighter out of those. Other than that, there's not really a whole lot more to say. I'm a big fan of this light. Uh, so were the people that I showed it to on set. And uh, yeah, I'm uh, interested to see what Suit Photo does in the future. I don't even know if I'm saying that correctly. Maybe it's Suit Photo. I have no idea. But Suit Photo is what I'm going with. So I highly recommend it. It's like maybe one third the price of one of those Aperture 120D or 120T lights. Uh, maybe even less. Uh, there'll be links in the description if you want to see the exact prices for all these things. And obviously clicking on those helps me out just a little bit, which always, you know, makes me feel good because you're helping me, I guess. That's kind of redundant. Um, yeah, <laughs> it's been a minute since I've made one of these. I don't know if I mentioned that. I'm getting back in the swing of these things. It's going to take me a little bit to catch my feet to get. How do you catch feet? I, I guess my puns need work, too. If you like this video, you know what to do. Hit that little like button down there. It would mean a lot to me. It would help me out tremendously. If you like what I do here or just want to see the rebrand that is coming up, that's right, I am rebranding the channel just a little bit with the move to Hollywood. Hit that subscribe button so you can see what's happening. If you uh, want to yell at me for how crappy the uh, comeback video is or just have questions about this lovely light down here, hit me in the comment section below. As long as you remember, oh, this hasn't changed. It's not a competition. Let's all rise in this business together. I'll see you guys soon this time. I promise.